Hello, my name is Carl. This is my backyard, and welcome to Carl's Backyard. I'm doing a quick update today. It's a beautiful day outside. You probably can't tell, but trust me, it is. You can see, fall has definitely hit the cypress tree. All of its needles have turned brown and started to drop off. And it's going to lose all of its needles here in the near future. Near future. Cypress trees being a deciduous conifer, they actually drop their needles during the, the winter and grow back new needles in the spring. So that's going to be just basically a bare stick here in the next month or so. Hello, my name's Carl. This is my backyard. Welcome to Carl's Backyard. I'm just doing a kind of a vlog thing this weekend. Mostly as a stalling tactic to keep me from having to do any real work. Here to slow down the amount of real work that I do. You can see it's definitely fall. It's about time to pull those floating planters out of the pond and replace it with some fake planters. Because I still like the idea of, of plants in the pond, even though it's too cold to keep them alive much longer. And the fish definitely like the extra, extra bit of shelter and security that those provide. Overnight leaf fall covers the pond, covers the ground, covers the patio, just everywhere. Everywhere you look, there are leaves. And like I said, this is just going to be kind of a vloggy thing. If you want, come over here to the stream head. You can see all the leaves collecting in the stream. I did just blow these out, or scrape these out, rake these out a couple days ago. And then we had like another windy night. And it actually hasn't been all that windy for the last couple of nights. But the leaves still wind up in the streams. Cannons leach out, turn the water brown, so you can see there. Outside of my shadow. There we go. But you can see the water's got a nice tea color to it and that's the tannins leaching out of the leaves water's going to stay that color until until I do a water change though in the spring and I do the pond clean out here's what it is that's what happens when you build your pond underneath some, some giant trees you can see all the leaves down the yard I got fire fit smoldering because, you know, I can you know, start off small or anything like that. I just do logs and drench them in lighter fluid, lit them on fire. And just letting them smolder down. Figure it'll probably actually get some flame going eventually. And I can put some more wood on it because I've still got a pretty big wood pile over there. See, I've got the hostas there. The leaves have died on the hostas. I need to go through. I'm probably going to go through here next after I put the camera down. I'll go through and cut the leaves off the hostas just because they've been kind of bothering me. Same thing with the hostas over there. And the hostas up in there. Those in particular I want to make sure I take care of because otherwise they just fall on the water and, and again, more leaves in the water. And right now they're all held in place so they're easier to get out of the water. And that's where we are. You can see them very heavily covered in leaves. Haven't done much leaf removal up to this point. The tree is right in the sun so I can't I can't swoosh up to see the tree. And come over this way though. And you can see my neighbor's tree still got leaves on it to drop. Both of those leaves both those trees drop leaves in my yard. Not so much, but they do. Smoke bushes have turned nice, nice red again. They're purple in the spring when they first come out, and then they turn green for the spring and the fall. And then late fall, they turn into this red color, and oddly enough, they don't fall off for the most part. Some of them do. And the smoke trees I've discovered hang on to about half their leaves into the next year, which is odd.
It's that time of year where they're real casual about feeding. It's like they'll eat, but they're not in like a huge hurry. See the baby fish in the back there below the goldfish. They're getting pretty big. The bubbly rock is spitting over there. Let me zoom in on it. It's gonna stop now. There it goes. That's how I know when the filter's clogged and needs to be cleaned out. As the bubbling rocks just starts to spit. He's getting too much air in there. The dog just watching the fish eat. Fish are swimming around looking for food. Let me throw it in there and you scare them all. Starting to feel drizzles. I have to go in soon. The fish need to hurry up and eat more. Eat more, eat faster. It's like when you first throw in the food, they're all excited to go get it. And then they get a couple bites and like, eh, okay. Hey like, guys, there's, there's still food, guys. And they know it's there, they're just not interested. They just want that first food. It's like a competition. I'm trying to scoop out of here with one hand. And see all the fish we could have dumped out. And birds and squirrels will enjoy that. The dog will enjoy it if he gets back over here. Look at the fish there in the middle fighting over the food, guys. There's plenty. I fed him enough. I've gotten bored sitting here. That's how you know when the fish have had enough food, when you get bored sitting there. You can check out the fire pit. The kids came out. I've been burning wood for like three days straight. The kids came out, they burned wood. You can tell the kids did it because they've left chunk of wood, chunks of wood all over the yard. I burned wood for three days straight. All I got is a little bit of ashes, a little bit of burned ground. A stick flipped out. And then I just I just washed it because it wasn't gonna, wasn't going anywhere. Yeah, you know, I didn't feel like walking over here and grabbing a burning stick. There's the remnants of the wood pile. I've gotten 
most of the actual original wood pile gone through and now it's down to just the weird pieces that got tossed in afterwards and the the, the slabs that were disqualified the stray pieces over there that got drug out from behind the shed and had been collecting behind the shed for who knows how long I had my kid clean those out, drag them out and I told him to clean out behind the head, shed so he you know, moved, moved everything from behind the shed into that pile there because well, it's not behind the shed anymore and my bamboo it's doing good, still debating on whether I bring that in or not, I might bring it in if there's a couple of days where it looks like it's going to get super cold and it's still got leaves on it I might go ahead and bring it in because what I've heard is that it'll defoliate it's still hardy, it'll, it'll live and come back in the spring just fine but it'll lose all of its leaves over the winter and because it's not in the ground I'm like ah. so I don't know I might bring it in might leave it out just a wheelbarrow always leave your wheelbarrows on their side that way they don't fill up with water and rust is the horrible pile of death where I've been treating all the slabs of wood with the preservative that's the copper sulfate this ground here will never grow funguses now I'll never have, never be able to start a mushroom farm in that spot right there I've sprayed so much of that that copper sulfate or whatever it is the antifungal wood preservative I think that's pretty much it and go back in See if the camera can adjust. I don't know, it's got a big red light on like the power's low or something. And it's not adjusting the contrast. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stop here. I think it's down to like 10% power, but the dog's outside. I left the dog out. He's out there. Can you see him? Through the plastic. So Kato. Kato, you're out there? Kato! Kato!